Hi, I'm Paul, your helpful Socksmith. In this video, we're going to be showing you how to remove, measure, and change a Euro cylinder. If your existing cylinder protrudes by four or more millimeters, it's worth just taking the pencil and marking the cylinder at where the, the desired finishing point for your new cylinder would be. This makes it easy to measure later on. Then if we take your screwdriver and remove the retaining screw, which will be in line with the bottom of the cylinder from the mechanism, and that's the one screw that's holding the cylinder in place. A standard cylinder, and you can see when the key's not in the door, the cam which is at the center of the door, that's the bit that's manipulated by the key. And when it gets up here, it manipulates the door's mechanism to lock and unlock the door. But when the key's not in the door, you can see how the, how the cam sorry, just sits just outside of the middle of the cylinder and that on its own will stop the cylinder from coming out of your door. Uh, depending which way the cylinder has been fit, it could be on this side or if it's the other way around it can be on the other side. Of course you won't know this which side it's on until you remove the cylinder. But all we do is we pop our key in, once we've, now we've removed the screw, so we pop the key in and we're just going to turn each way and just test. And we know if we turn the wrong way the cylinder's still not going to come because the cam is now even more into the mechanism. So we're going to turn it the other way and now it has lined up and that cylinder will then slide out. If you've got a thumb turn, same idea, but the difference of the thumb turn is as I mentioned before, it manipulates the mechanism at the top. So it could be that when you've unlocked your door to change the lock, when you've unlocked it, you'll go and click and click the mechanism and left and let go of the thumb turn and left the cam way off where it would be where where it would be if you'd used the key. So again, same idea in principle, we need this cam to come right to the very bottom so it lines up with the cylinder so it will slide out. So all we're going to do is we're just going to keep gently turning it until it reaches the bottom at prime pressure from the other side of the door as you go. As soon as you get that little bit of movement, you know that you've kind of lined up and you can slide the lock out. If you turn the thumb turn and it seems to go no further, it probably means it started about here and you've turned it and it's re-hit the mechanism and then it won't go any further. So you know you've gone as far as it will go, so you need to come back the other way until it comes down to the bottom and then you can slide the cylinder out. So now we're going to place the key in and I've just turned it to so the bullet between 11 o'clock and 1 o'clock, applying some pressure from the external side of the door and out it comes. Same again with the thumb turn, just moving that thumb turn around so it finds that sweet spot. So measuring the cylinder is really quite straightforward. It's measured in millimetres and you measure from each side, from the centre hole on the screw where we, took that, uh, where we took the screw out to the edge of the cylinder. And as you can see on a, a standard cylinder that's, that's fit uh, the door correctly, we can just place that measurement. If you don't have a ruler or a tape measure, uh, you can email us at hello at helpplots.com and ask for this PDF lock measurer. We can send this, you print the PDF file off and it'll be the measure that you can see behind me. It's to scale um, and you just line up your cylinder hole or the screw hole with the, the hole on the image on, the, um, on, on our image there and then you can see the measure either side of the screw. And as I say, it's to scale so it's nice and easy. Um, if we look at the one where we had to, where it wasn't the right size, you can see again on the image there, you can measure the side that was correct um, as, as the cylinder is, and you can see the pencil mark that we made on there, um, on, the, on the other side that was too long for us, um, and on there you can see that you measure up to that pencil line and not the edge of the cylinder, and that will help you get the correct size cylinder when you replace it. Um, again with the thumb turn, we're measuring the cylinder, remember you don't include the, the actual thumb turn part, you're measuring as you can see uh, where I'm pointing to here, you're measuring up to where we are, uh, where we're pointing. So we're using a thumb turn here but it's the same process with the key, just lining up that cam again so the lock slides straight in, nice and easy because we can see what we're doing this time. We can check that the cam is in the right place and is operating the door and then we can put back the retaining screw to hold that cylinder in place. So finally, just a couple of quick uh, hints and tips. 
Uh, firstly, I would always recommend where possible and where the screw is in decent condition that you use the screw from your old cylinder and reuse that when you fit the new cylinder. That's because screws tend to go in different sizes with different brands um, and if the screw is too short it's not going to hold your cylinder correctly and if it's too long on some door mechanisms it can go through your cylinder hole straight into the mechanism and actually break your door's mechanism which in a short space of time ends up becoming an expensive repair. The other thing with that in mind is tip number two, which is always use, even if you have a drill for, for screwing and unscrewing, always use a handheld screwdriver. That's so you can feel as soon as there's any tension that you don't want to be there, you know that you can stop screwing. Whereas with a drill, if, uh, if you've drilled uh, or screwed through the cylinder and held that in place and continued and then hit your mechanism, with the drill you're just going to keep going and break your door. Whereas with a handheld screwdriver, you'll feel as soon as the screw hits something, then you'll, you'll kind of know that something's maybe not right and you can just take the screw out and put a different one in. That is if you have changed the screw. So I hope you found this video useful. Um, it's, as you can see, it's not terribly difficult to change a cylinder. There are a couple of little things to look out for and issues to, to avoid and traps that you can fall into, but generally it's fairly straightforward. As I mentioned earlier in the video, if you would like the PDF uh, cylinder uh, measuring image uh, sent to you if you drop us an email at hello at helpbox.com um, and, and just request that measuring tool and we'll send that by pdf for you all you need to do then is print it off and place your cylinder on top of that image lining up the screw hole with the screw hole in the image and you will get an accurate measure for your new cylinder